Johnny Manziel was the most polarizing player in college football history. He was brash, arrogant, and had a party addiction, yet every Saturday people tuned in to watch Johnny football shine. How did one of the most legendary college football players that beat Alabama his freshman year end up being one of the biggest busts in NFL history? Johnny Manziel's impressive football career started taking shape during his high school years in Kerrville, Texas at Tyvee High School. Known for his dynamic dual threat capabilities as a quarterback, Manziel exhibited talent and that resonated within his local community. As a three-year starter, he amassed impressive stats, completing 520 of 819 passes for 7,626 yards and 76 touchdowns. In addition, his ground game was just as strong, rushing for 531 times for 4,045 yards and 77 touchdowns. Despite being a lifelong Texas Longhorns fan, Manziel was not recruited by the University of Texas, and it was even rumored that they wanted to move him to defensive back. Initially committing to Oregon's speedy offense, Manziel later pivoted, choosing to play for Texas A&M, where his talent would further shine. Johnny Manziel's freshman year at Texas A&M started modestly, but in an exceptional game against Arkansas, he smashed Archie Manning's 43-year-old total offense record by producing 557 yards, which thrusted him into the spotlight overnight. Manziel's record-breaking spree didn't stop there. In a game against Louisiana Tech, he eclipsed his own total offensive record by amassing an astounding 576 yards, becoming the first player in SEC history to achieve two 500-plus total offensive games in a single season. However, it was his pivotal role in leading Texas A&M to a 29 and 24 victory versus number one ranked Alabama in Tuscaloosa that truly propelled him into national fame. Accounting for 345 of AM's 400 yards of offense, including two passing touchdowns, Manziel's performance against Alabama was a revelation, positioning him as a front runner for the Heisman Trophy in the national watch lists and polls. In a game against the Missouri Tigers on November 24th, Manziel displayed his multifaceted offensive approach in front of his home crowd, totaling for 439 yards with three passing and two rushing touchdowns. With this game, he shattered the single season record for offensive production in the SEC with 4,600 yards outperforming recent Heisman Trophy winners Cam Newton and Tim Tebow. On December 6th, Manziel was honored with the Davy O'Brien Award, and just two days later, he made history by becoming the first freshman ever to receive the Heisman Trophy. These achievements marked Manziel's freshman year, an instant college football legend who was destined for greatness. The start of Johnny Manziel's sophomore season was marked by controversy and uncertainty as reports emerged alleging that he had signed autographs for money in January 2013, which was a huge violation at the time of NCAA rules. After negotiations between A&M and the NCAA, it was agreed to suspend Manziel for the first half of the season's opening game against Rice. Once back on the field, Manziel wasted no time proving his worth. In the game against number one Alabama, he achieved a school record by throwing for 464 yards and five touchdowns, even though AM fell short 49 to 42. His primary target was now NFL superstar Mike Evans, who had seven receptions and a school record of 279 receiving yards. Despite facing more prepared SEC defenses that season, which slowed down his ground game, Manziel still exhibited impressive accuracy and productivity in his passing game. He finished the season with a completion rate of 70%, throwing for 4,100 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions, 
while also rushing for 759 yards and nine touchdowns. Despite the early controversy, Manziel's performance in the 2013 season reaffirmed his place as one of the most dynamic and effective quarterbacks in college football. Before we talk about Manziel's controversial NFL career, remember to hit the like and subscribe button for more videos just like this. Leading up to the 2014 NFL Draft, Johnny Manziel emerged as one of the most controversial figures, drawing diverse opinions that ranged from undraftable to being hailed as a rare competitor. On the positive side, analysts acknowledge Manziel's exceptional creativity with the football, his competitive edge, and remarkable athleticism, which enabled him to be elusive and escape the pocket under pressure. However, there were also concerns about his relatively small size for a quarterback, average arm talent, tendency to make risky decisions on the field, and questionable work ethic, which reportedly included a lack of dedication to film study. On the day of the draft, 21 teams chose to pass over Manziel. The Cleveland Browns eventually drafted him as the 22nd overall pick. Standing at 5'11", Manziel became the shortest quarterback to ever be drafted in the first round. Despite the varied pre-draft analysis, Manziel's college performances held enough promise to convince the Browns to take a chance on Manziel. Johnny Manziel's rookie season with the Cleveland Browns was riddled with controversy. On August 22, 2014, Manziel was fined $12,000 by the NFL for flipping off the Washington sideline in a preseason game. Brian Hoyer was chosen over Manziel as the starter for the opening regular season game. Manziel finally got his first NFL start, which came in week 15 against the Cincinnati Bengals, which proved very difficult for the rookie quarterback. He completed just 10 of 18 passes for 80 yards and two interceptions, resulting in a passer rating of only 27.3. The Browns were embarrassed 0-30 that game. In his second career start against the Panthers, Manziel completed only 3 of 8 passes before leaving the game with a hamstring injury, less than 2 minutes before the first half ended. Manziel was officially on bust watch as his game did not transition to the NFL. Manziel's work ethic and commitment were brought into question by over 20 sources within the Cleveland Browns. One anonymous player even dubbed Manziel's rookie season as a 100% joke, indicating deep-seated concerns about his dedication and professionalism in his first year. The 2015 season is where the once legendary Johnny Football plummeted to one of the greatest disappointments the NFL has ever seen. Even though Manziel was announced as the starting quarterback for the rest of the season on November 17th, this move was short-lived, as Manziel was demoted to third string just a week later after videos of him partying in Texas during the bye week surfaced. Josh McCown got injured, and Manziel regained his starting role after the Browns suffered a crushing 37-3 loss to the Bengals under QB Austin Davis. Upon returning, Manziel completed 21 of 31 passes for 270 yards and one touchdown in a 24-10 victory over the San Francisco 49ers, putting an end to the Browns' seven-game losing streak. He missed the last game of the season due to a concussion, but pictures showed that he was in Las Vegas instead of being with the team and recovering in Cleveland. And Brown staff confirmed that Manziel missed a scheduled check-in on the morning of the final game. Following news of domestic violence incident involving Manziel and his ex-girlfriend, the Browns released a statement criticizing Manziel, saying his actions had undermined the team's reputation. Manziel was then released by the Browns on March 11, 2016, officially marking the end of his tenure as an NFL quarterback. Despite Johnny Manziel's legendary college career, where he was one of the most electrifying players in history, his play style could not transition to the NFL. While his raw talent was undeniable, 
he lacked the requisite work ethic and commitment to thrive as a starting NFL quarterback. He instead favored partying in a frivolous lifestyle over studying game tape and honing his skills. Being drafted by the Cleveland Browns also did not help, as they are notorious for ending promising quarterback careers. This lack of dedication culminated in a short-lived NFL career, which ended after just two seasons, leaving behind a legacy of unfulfilled potential and missed opportunities. Comment who your all-time favorite college football player is. And as always, thanks for tuning in to Real Friends in Football, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this.